Hi everyone and Happy New Year. I hope that you are all keeping well. I hope that you had a lovely Christmas and I hope that the new year has been good to you so far. I'm going to start the new year off with a video on vertigo because quite a few people have asked me about my vertigo symptoms and what I do to manage it and a couple of people have also asked me to do a video on it so that's what I'm going to be doing today. I've had my vertigo for nine years now and to be quite frank with you there is only one thing that really allows me to lead quite a normal life with the vertigo symptoms that I get and it is medication and it's lifelong medication but I also do natural things as well or natural movements and stuff like that to help my vertigo alongside my medication because even though I take medication for it it doesn't make my symptoms disappear it controls them but it doesn't kind of let make it go away so I'm going to tell you the three things that help me um, and one of them is including my medication so I'll talk about that a little bit later but um, you know it everything's going to be different for each person and also I think you have to determine what type of vertigo that you have because there are different types and different things can cause different types of vertigo as well so it's important to find out what your vertigo is and what's causing it to be able to determine the treatment to be able to help you. I didn't have my vertigo until 2012 so it was about three or four years after I was actually diagnosed with my MS and I started getting really bad symptoms dizziness um, the room was always spinning and then it kind of got to the point where actually I was waking up with this vertigo and I couldn't get out of bed because if I tried to walk I would literally my whole body would just kind of veer to one side and I couldn't walk properly and um, so it was kind of getting to a point where it was really debilitating and I still have those symptoms now but very sort of less frequently than what I used to do everything that I talk to you about on my videos are always tried and tested and they're always given to me by specialists any specialists that I've seen during my time with my MS and that includes um, my MS nurses my MS doctors and ENT specialists so I just want to let you know that this isn't just something I've made up it is something that um, has been given to me by specialist and it's been sort of tried and tested by me and I find it really helpful and therefore I want to pass that information on to you guys so maybe it might help you. So here we go, let's get started with the things that help. When I first started having my vertigo attacks I would go in to see my MS team and they would do a manoeuvre called the Epley manoeuvre. You may have heard of it and it really helped me at the time it helped me to manage it but it would only help for a short period of time and you have to do the airplane maneuver correctly otherwise it doesn't work so I was really lucky to be shown by my MS um, doctor Dr Professor Robinson and he showed me how to do this maneuver and I've been able to carry on doing this maneuver on my own. I'm not going to show you how to do it in this video because it actually triggers my vertigo if I do it. So I'm going to put all the links down to the Epley maneuver, everything that you need to know about it and the way in which it needs to be carried out properly so you can read up about it there. But it's really, really great if you have um, the type of vertigo where you have like crystals in your ear and they need to be resettled back into the right place. So please take a read of that. I'll put everything in the description box and hopefully that will be able to help. The second lot of exercises that my MS team would help me to go through would be something called the Cooksey Cawthorn exercises. And they were actually exercises that were provided to soldiers back in the 1940s for problems with balance. And so they've kind of been tried and tested and they've continued. And it's what people use now for vertigo and balance problems. Now, I'm going to do some of those in the video today. It's not the extensive 
um, range of movements and exercises. Again, I will put something in the description box below listing the Cawthorn exercises so you can have a look through. But I'll do some for you today, some which will not make me feel ill. But one thing I have to stress with these exercises is that when you do them, please take time to do them. Do not rush them. Do not do anything that makes you feel sick. If you do feel really, really sick, then stop them. But these exercises are going to make you feel nauseous if you have vertigo. And that's what they're kind of meant to do. You, you kind of have to push through it and push through the uncomfortable feeling so that you can get to a point where you can keep going and gradually your head and your brain and everything gets used to what you're doing and as you go through your exercises and you keep doing them and you keep practicing them your vertigo actually improves through doing these. I will do the Cooksey exercises at the end of the video but I will just quickly go through the medication that I'm on at the moment. It took me a very very long time to actually be diagnosed with this problem and I saw again I saw so many specialists about my vertigo and I finally got to see a really great ENT specialist. I did loads and loads of tests and I was hooked up to all sorts of machines and ones that beeped and ones that you had to see flashing lights and ones that tipped your head upside down and it was very uncomfortable. I was put on a medication called Topiramate, it's also known as Topamax and ever since I've been on that medication it has stopped my vertigo um, probably to about 80%. I still get symptoms of vertigo and when I do get the symptoms of vertigo they're extremely bad um, but if I were to not have that medication I probably couldn't live a normal life because the vertigo is so debilitating. Um, I started off by having 50 milligrams a day but then I had to actually double that to 100 a day because I was starting to have the Alice in Wonderland symptoms again and it just triggers everything with the vertigo and the aura headaches. So it's all kind of combined, but the medication has really, really helped. There was a point where I really wanted to come off all medication, so I actually, sto I actually stopped those tablets completely and I tried to just do everything naturally, but I realised quite soon after coming off the tablets, I think it was about two weeks into it, that actually my body wasn't okay with coming off the tablets and I was having severe vertigo attacks again very, very regularly and I realised that actually I'm probably better on the tablets and the quality of life that I have on the tablets is so, so much better now um, than what I had off them because it was things like missing work and not being able to get out of bed, feeling sick all the time and it's the best medication for me. So they are the things that my MS team have helped me with and all the specialists and, and people like that and it's been amazing and I thank them so much. Um, but you never stop reading up and you never stop kind of researching about vertigo at least in my case I didn't and I started to kind of look at you know things that maybe trigger vertigo and things that you can do to prevent your vertigo so there's actually a correlation between vertigo and vitamin D in the fact that if you're deficient in vitamin D it can actually cause symptoms of vertigo so I always make sure that I take my vitamin D multivitamins because I'm unsure if I'm getting it in all of my food and my you know with my nutrients and stuff like that so that's really really important to include. So other things to think about as well is maintaining a regular lifestyle so making sure that you get to sleep on time, making sure that you eat at similar times as well because that's all important. We can actually do things as well like reducing screen time because electronics can irritate the balance nerve. So just maybe spending less time on your laptop and your cell phone and your TV might be able to help us. 
So now I'm just going to do some of the Cooksey Cawthorn exercises that I was taught by my MS team. I really hope that they are useful to you. Please, if you try them, as I said, go easy on yourself and go slowly as well. Maybe just try five at a time and give yourself a rest. They do say to do this sort of twice a day. So maybe you could do it in the morning and then maybe a session in the evening. Um, but as I said, just take it at your own pace. Okay, so first of all, it's really simple. We're gonna start off with some eye exercises and these are really great because you can just do them sitting down in your bed, but you probably want to do it where you can just focus and you haven't got anything else going on around you. So just take some quiet time out to do these. So just start by looking up and down. And then you want to look side to side. Then hold your thumb out and bring your thumb in, keeping your eyes on your thumb and out and in. Always focusing on your thumb. This one always makes me feel a little bit sick. Now for the head movement. This one actually makes me feel very, very um, dizzy and a little bit nauseous. So if you have quite bad vertigo, just really go easy on this one, particularly when you look up and back. Um, but just, as I said, go at your pace and if it's too much for you, just stop, okay? So what you wanna do is tilt your head back and then to your chin. Back to your chin. And the next head movement is from side to side. So side to side the next exercise is a sitting position so if you can do this sit in a chair and you're going to pretend to pick something up on the ground beside you so you're just reaching down beside you where your foot is as though you were picking something up from the ground. And you do it about 10 times. The next exercise is standing up and sitting down, if you can do this. So you just stand up and sit down and you do that about 10 times or five times and then if you're comfortable and you don't feel too dizzy, you can do it with your eyes closed. So, The next one is those with good coordination, <laughs> unlike myself. Um, but again, this one can make you feel a little bit dizzy. So it's throwing the ball from hand to hand and looking whilst looking up. So it has to be over eye level and like this. Lost the ball. <laughs> and the last exercise is sitting on a chair Standing up, turning, sitting back down, standing up, turning, alternate ways, st sitting down. And this one can really cause dizziness. So be really careful on this one and only make sure that you can do this if you're okay to do it. And if it's not maybe safe to do so for you, make sure that there's somebody else in the room if you're really unbalanced. So that's the end of the exercises. I'm sorry again, it's such a long video, but I don't think you can explain these things to people in such a short space of time. But if you want, maybe just condense it down to the exercises. 
or just have a look at the Epley manoeuvre, which is very, very helpful. Um, but again, as I said, everybody's different. So just make sure that the exercises that you are doing are going to be suitable for the type of vertigo that you have. So that's it, guys. All that remains for me is to head downstairs and go make myself a nice cup of tea. I hope that you're all well. Please keep safe and I shall see you soon. Bye everyone.